says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, that is in the, in the past, were written for our learning. Yeah. And we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. What is the scripture telling us? Whatever was written in the past was written for our learning. Hallelujah. In other words, there's a, there's a lesson you can learn in all that's written in the past. Some people don't like to read the Old Testament. In particular, a lot of modern Christians in this part of the world. They will just ignore the Old Testament. And uh, just live in the New Testament. And it's great to want to live in the New Testament, but you know what? You can't, you, the, the New Testament comes out of the Old Testament. You need the Old Testament. And if, and if you ignore the Old Testament, you miss out on a lot of stuff that God says is going to happen, particularly in times. Because remember, the book of Genesis in the, in the Hebrew is called Bereshit, means the beginning. In the book of Genesis, we have a lot of things beginning for the first time. So the whole book of the book of Genesis are, are beginnings. And, and there's a spiritual law that where you see first mention, if a particular, if the first time it's mentioned in the book of Genesis, it is significant. Because it will carry a theme all the way through the entire Bible. Amen. And that's why you see, you go to certain passages in the book of Genesis, and you see certain prophetic things written. In fact, the whole book of Genesis is really prophetic. You'll see the conclusion of it in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Sure. You'll see its bookend. For example, you see Nimrod, the first world dictator, right? Yeah. Remember him? Yeah. Book of Genesis. What do we see in the book of Revelations? We see the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. yes? Yes? Yes. We see the Tower of Babel in the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. We see in the book of Revelations Babylon being destroyed. Yeah. They're related, believe yeah. me. Can you, can you see that? Amen. Can, can we see things come to a conclusion. We see uh, the Tree of Life. In the book of Revelations, it was there for Adam and Eve to eat. God told them you could freely eat of all the fruit of the trees except for one particular tree. The one tree they could have eaten from, they didn't eat from. But the, the one tree they were not supposed to eat from, they chose to eat from. And they sinned. And as a result of it, they were removed from the Garden of Eden. They found themselves on the outside looking in, longing to go back in. And we find in the book of Revelations, what we see, the tree of life is like it's available now. Amen. Is it not? Yeah. Amen. It's through the redemption plan. Amen. So we see the beginnings in the book of Reve Genesis, and we see the conclusions of things wrapping up in the book of Revelations. Mm -hmm. So the, again, Romans chapter 15, verse 4 says, Whatsoever things were written aforetime, that is in the past, were written for our learning. Mm -hmm. Well, in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4, Pastor Phil just mentioned it just a moment ago. <laughs> Again, I was thinking, boy, she's going to go start to the minister, what I planned to minister. But nevertheless, I can see the Holy Spirit was using her. <laughs> and uh, and, in, and in, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, the word of God says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And truly, we're living in the days where people are running to and fro. We've got modern technology. We've got airplanes. We've got all kinds of things that people can go to and fro. People are even going out into outer space and coming back. And things like that. And truly, knowledge has increased. The knowledge, the, the knowledge has increased the past, the knowledge that has increased for the past 40 years is far, is, is, it cannot be compared to the past 400 years. I, I mean, the, the, just the 40 years alone is, is, the past 400 years prior to that is nothing. Yeah. And, and, and we're just going like, it's just exponential. It's just going up, up, up like on a steep, steep um, learning curve. The whole world, especially with the AI technology and all the, the new technology that's out. Not that AI is new. It's new to us, but they've had it since World War II. They've been yeah. working at it and, and, and things like that. So as, as the Word of God says, God told Daniel, as you know, the book of Daniel is it's all prophetic. Uh, throughout the whole book, and God told him, shut the book, it's going to be sealed up until the time of the end. Mm -hmm. We are now in the time of the end, and we see God open up some truths. We, got, we see God open up the spiritual truths that have uh, that been locked, that in the past, uh, many Bible scholars, many uh, those theologians couldn't have known in the past. But now we can know, because this is the way how things are unfolding. 
and knowledge is increased, that n not only is knowledge increasing on the natural realm, but also spiritually too. That on the, just so, so in both realms. So if it's if it's true in one, if it's true, it has to be true in both realms, both physically and spiritually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're living in a time where God is on, uh, is 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 unveiling hidden truth, truth that has been locked up for thousands of years, hundreds of years, and uh, it's just an exciting time to be alive as a believer in Christ. Amen. It's not exciting if you're not a believer. Mm -hmm. It's scary if you're not a believer. It's scary if you're not a believer and you see what's coming, you see what's going on in planet Earth. Have you noticed all the unrest all over the world? Yes, yeah. Portugal, Peru, yeah. Haiti. Yeah. I mean, it's just country after country after country, Iran, country after country after country, all this unrest. I mean, last week, last week one, one, one particular country had peace, now they've got unrest. It'd be interesting to see which ones have unrest going throughout this, this week. What's it showing us? It shows us that, that there's a spirit moving throughout the entire planet Earth. Things have changed and are changing. Not for the better. Not for the better. But worse. It's getting more difficult. Unrest. Do you see? Mass murders. Police brutality. All kinds of horrible things have taken place. Things are just going to another level of iniquity of evil, so it would seem. But it's the time that we are all living in. And therefore, it shouldn't, it shouldn't alarm us. We should expect this, to, to tell you the truth. We, we should expect this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's gonna get more difficult for those who do not know the Lord. Yes. So yesterday we took time to, try to, to understand uh, 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 Spiritually, what had been going on before uh, God created man and put him on planet Earth, and what was going on going forward. So we're going to come back to this a little bit and just just, just start to go forward on, on this because we really do need to have a good understanding. We see from uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God declared war. It was a seed war, was it not? Yes. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Um, King James reads and says, And I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, it was here where God declared war. Uh, because, you know, he's got, uh, there's God, there's Adam and Eve, there is the enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a time for Adam and Eve to give an account for what happened. Mm -hmm. It's a court. Mm -hmm. They pointed the finger, and Eve pointed the finger and says, the serpent beguiled me. Mm -hmm. God passed judgment on it, yeah. on the serpent. And he's saying, basically, Satan, it's going to be war between the seed of the woman and your seed. Mm -hmm. Saints, pause there for a moment. What is God saying there? The woman is going to have seed and Satan is going to have seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, see, see, some people don't stop to think about that for a moment, that there are satanic seeds in planet Earth. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's not kosher. It's not 100% kosher. We're not all... 100% mm -hmm. human beings the way we ought to. Yeah. There are some people that look like human beings that are not 100% human being. Yes. They're partial. Mm -hmm. Or some, 100% not. Some are mixed. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, how did all this happen? Well, this all started when we, when we see in uh, Genesis chapter 6. We'll go there for a moment. But God declared war and he said basically the woman is going to bring forth the messiah this is basically what he's saying yeah. and the messiah is going to crush your head satan mm -hmm. and you will bruise his heel mm -hmm. it's going to be a battle mm -hmm. it's war but i'm telling you how it's going to end it's not going to end well for you satan mm -hmm. and hence we have the battle going on ever since mm -hmm. you see so if you were Satan, what would you do? 
you've understood the, the prophecy quite well. You understood the judge, judgment quite well. If you were Satan, you'd go out of your way to ensure that that's not going to be fulfilled. Yeah. You will do whatever you can to change things and mess things up to make it impossible for this Messiah to come on the scene mm -hmm. and, this, and to crush his head. Because once his head is crushed, it's over for him. It's downhill for him. Oh, oh. Yeah. So he went out of his way. And, you know, he had uh, uh, his number one target is a woman. He hates women. Does he not? Yes. Because yes. yeah. it was a woman that pointed him out. Yeah. True. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's why women have suffered so much. Mm -hmm. And speaking on a whole. True. Mm -hmm. Because it would seem to me she is the enemy's number one target. Mm -hmm. He tried to get to Adam, but he had to go through the woman to get to Adam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey. She acted as a shield. She acted as, well, if you look up her name, he, he, you know, you, you can see she's a shield. She, she's there. She, not physically, but spiritually. She's, she, she's a protector. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes. If she's in tune with God, she's very effective. But he went after the firstborn. As soon as she gave birth to her son, well, who was he? Abel? Wasn't that? I'm talking about Eve. Yes. Did he not try to kill him? Yes. Did he not kill him? Yes. He, used, he used Cain, the brother of, of Abel, mm -hmm. to kill him. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted to make sure it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's a seed war. It's a battle. Of, it's, 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 it's all about one seed against another seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And, and therefore, we know that all firstborns, unless they're dedicated to God, they're going to have issues. True. Because even though we look back in history now, and we see how Satan has messed up all firstborn people, most people, if you look at the Bible, and you look at the prominent people in the Bible, all firstborns did not do very well. Mm -hmm. Reuben did not do very well. No, sir. Did he not? Mm -hmm. they, they all had problems, they all had issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was using that for an example to show you how the seed war has continued. And it still continues today. That's true. But the main goal for Satan was to get the Messiah. So what does he do? He puts a plan with his wicked angels in motion. And we see it kind of unfolding in Genesis chapter 6. Where the word of God says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them. The sons of God, these are not human beings, these are angels. In Hebrew it says uh, the Ben Elohim. Uh, the sons of God, the, the angelic class, yes. saw the daughters of men that they were fair. In other words, they were beautiful, they were looking, they were, they were good looking, they were attractive. Mm -hmm. um, they, they were alluring, they, they wanted them. There was something to be desired of them. They took them wives, all of which they chose. Now this word took is implying that they, they, that it, they were forced. In other words, to put it blame, they were raped. The women did not have a choice. Mm -hmm. They were taken by force, and these angelic beings uh, uh, had sexual relations with them and got them pregnant. As a result of getting them pregnant, we see God is very displeased in verse 3. He says, The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, mm -hmm. yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. In, in other words, God says there's going to be a time limit. Not going to put up with this for too much longer. Because he saw how humanity had been corrupted. Mm -hmm. He saw how humanity had been polluted. Yes. He saw that humanity was not the way he created it. Mm -hmm. He saw, and as I read to you and I shared with you from, from a passage from the book of Enoch, the 200 angels, the Bible tells us in the book of Je in Revelation chapter 12 verse 4, a third of the angels fell with Satan. Of that third, they're innumerable, 200, according to the book of Enoch, decided to put a, a wicked plan together. They were called watchers or watchmen. And their role was initially before uh, 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 they, f before they fell, um, it was God's intent for God's angels to teach men certain things. Yes. But these angels taught men wicked things. 
They taught them sorcery. They taught them their cult. They taught them how to make weapons of war. They taught them how to, how to do abortions, how to kill, how to do sacrifices, human sacrifices. Taught them all kinds of wicked things, wicked, you know, all kinds of wicked things that you could think of. They taught them. They taught them how to worship the heavens, mm -hmm. the heavenly bodies, yeah. and, and the, the other deities. And just and, and the goal was to move them away from God. And in the process of that, they took the women, took on a, a human form, raped the women, yeah. got the women pregnant, and the women gave birth to the to the seed of these angelic fallen angels. These are these angels are fallen angels. So where the word of God says uh, that uh, they, were, they were giants, the Hebrew word for giants is Nephilim. Mm -hmm. Nephilim means fallen ones. Mm -hmm. They are the offspring of between a human being and angelic being yes, sir. called a Nephilim. Mm -hmm. and the, the, and so Nephilim means fallen ones. So again, I'll share with you from the book of Enoch. I didn't read too much, but it's sure enough that as they began to multiply and increase, uh, uh, they began to devour everything because, you know, they, they're, they're giants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a, a, a huge appetite. Mm -hmm. And they began to eat everything they possibly can, even human beings, even animals, and, and blood. I didn't read that part yesterday. Mm -hmm. So they need blood to survive. Mm -hmm. So in the process of it, Enoch, uh, God was getting ready to bring judgment on these 200 angels. Mm -hmm. And they approached Enoch because Enoch had a good relationship with God and asked, asked Enoch to make a petition for them. So Enoch went to God, according to the book of Enoch, and made a petition, and God told him, no, I'm going to judge them for what they've done and the wickedness that they've done. And they were making a petition, and then they went on to say, we'll make a petition for our offspring. We know that we took a chance, we knew what we were getting into when we left our first estate. Remember that? Yes. You know, they left that heavenly boat, left the way how God created them, even though they had fallen angels. And, and came down to a lower level, so to speak, and cohabited with, with, with men, and with, 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 with women, the 200 entered into an oath. Mm -hmm. And they agreed and said, we are going to stick with this oath and we're going to, go, we're going to carry it through, mm -hmm. knowing that they were going to be severely punished. Mm -hmm. Well, God told Enoch, no, I am not going to set, I'm not going to defer the punishment. And as for their offspring, they will never ascend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The most they can live is 500 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, and when they lose the physical bodies, they'll remain on earth and they'll go down. Mm -hmm. Hence, this is where we get evil spirits. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Evil spirits is an offspring mm -hmm. of angels, fallen angels, mm -hmm. and human women. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they're innumerable on planet earth. Mm -hmm. Plus, we have evil spirits, I, I believe according to the word of God, from previous civilizations that was here on earth before. We have all kinds of fossils, skeletons, to show that there was a previous civilization before God created man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. And so, we're going to have to understand this so that you can speak intelligently when somebody asks you questions or you're talking to somebody about these things. Because if you don't, how are you going to talk about dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. How are you going to talk about the Nathanthal man? They have the skeletons, they have proof. And, you, and, if, and, you, and if you say, well, they didn't exist, you, 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 that, you, you lose your argument. You, you, you have no credibility right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, there's an explanation for them. There was a previous ex civilization before. It's called the pre-Adamic race. Yes. The in, the, there was an angelic race here too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm talking long before God created man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bef all this was here before God brought judgment on Satan and all that was under him from between Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 2. That is when a third of the angels fell. So uh, we see in the book of Jude when the word of God says they're locked up now. I'm talking about the 200. Recently I was reading some articles. There's still giants in there today, you know. The American soldiers that have recently been in Afghanistan, many of them have stories of when they're in Afghanistan, they were fighting. Yeah. Oh, you, you've seen it? You've seen those articles? I've seen the articles, yeah. Okay. Where they, where they came in contact with giants and there were no match for them because these, 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 these giants are these Nephilims mm -hmm. and they're not all tall. 
They're not all big and giants. Some look just like you and myself. All right, so don't think they're all super tall and super strong. But in Afghanistan, they came across some, and they had a problem with them. And they took all the modern weapons to try to destroy them, and they couldn't, in some cases. Because they do have some supernatural strength. In Vietnam War, they had these, uh, when they started using the, the, new, the latest technologies back in the 50s and 60s, in particular American soldiers, they had night vision, and they would, uh, uh, you, know, you know, the soldiers would have night vision. They were able to see things they kind of should be seeing. In other words, they were seeing beyond the physical realm into the spiritual realm. It messed them up. The spirit world is real. The dark spirit world is real. And um, Iraq, giants there too, when they were there, when the Americans were in there too. And different places of, of planet Earth, they've, they've, they, they've found individuals, or some of them, and they know where some of them are hanging out, but it's not knowledge for the world to know. I'm just saying, I'm just letting you know, they're still here on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Not only are they still here on planet Earth, but you have some who look just like you and myself, tall just like you and myself, look like us, the same color, dress like us, and moving amongst us, mm -hmm. and in government, in pieces of authority, go to school with you, sure. work with you, yeah. and, and all this, this may sound like conspiracy, but it's not conspiracy because the Bible tells us, as we saw in Daniel chapter two, go with me there for a moment. Let's just go, Daniel chapter two for a moment. It, it lets us know what, what to occur. Preach. Daniel chapter two, just so that you know, Daniel was given an interpretation to the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, and you, you see right, right here in verse 43, he says, and he, and in the midst of his giving an interpretation, and, and you know, he sees the image, you know that, that image? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, a uh, golden head, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then you've got uh, silver, you've got brass, you've got iron, legs of iron, toes of iron and clay, and you know, iron and clay don't mix, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay? And, and, and all of those metals represent a time period in the history of man. Yes. Mm -hmm. The gold was Babylon, the silver was Medes, the bronze was Greeks. Yeah. I'm talking about world powers. Yeah. The iron, iron legs are who? Rome, oh. right? Yeah. Has Rome gone away? No, right? And then we got the toes, the ten toes, which is iron and clay. That's where we are right now. Mm -hmm. I, I, no, no, sorry. We're, 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 we're in the legs still, the iron part. And moving into the to, to the ten toes, iron and clay, because the ten te, ten toes is like you see that in the book of Gen, uh, Daniel, book of Revelation, mm -hmm. particularly during the tribulation days. But iron and clay don't mix, mm -hmm. yeah. does it? No. no. If that doesn't mix spiritually, if that doesn't mix physically. How about spiritually? Listen to what it says in verse forty-three. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Who is they? Well, we now know who the they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. The they are the Nephilims. Mm -hmm. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, if this is, if, if what I'm sharing with you this morning, if it's thrown some of you for a loop, I would suggest that when the video is released, uh, from yesterday, you go over that because I, I went into more detail and laid a foundation. And so, if anybody's online, anybody's here for the who's hearing this for the first time and thinking, "Whoa, where is he going on this? This is conspiracy theory." No, mm -hmm. you get into the Word of God enough, you'll see that it's the truth. All right, and uh, so We're gonna have to take time to understand that there's a spiritual war going on. It's a seed war going on. Because if we don't, then we can't understand, we won't be able to understand the other things. Okay? The government recently have decided to release documents on the, all the UFO sightings and all the information they have. And people, if they can get their hands on it, they're, they're reading it, and, and they, we can hear more and more UFO stuff, UFO stuff and stuff like that. I'm not saying all UFO, UFO stuff is demonic, but some of it is. But since you have to understand, you're gonna have to understand that, 
that it's their way to disguise what is coming. Mm -hmm. So they have to start to release this information because what is coming is, it, 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 whether you call it UFOs or not, it's going to be the angelic class, fallen angels, moving amongst people and doing havoc amongst us. Mm -hmm. But the UFO is a dis the, the UFO narrative is a disguise for all of that. Are UFO sightings real? Yes, they're, they're, they're well documented. Uh, are people being abducted? Yes, it is well documented. And all of those who have been abducted and those who manage to return, they all have the basically the same message and it's like this, we have to save the planet Earth. We have to save planet Earth. It's a basic message. They're all come, those who come, who manage to come back, not all of them come back. And why do they have to save planet Earth saints? Because of the judgment God passed on Earth concerning the Nephilim, that He's going to destroy them. Mm -hmm. And the enemy knows this, and 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 also the the, the two hundred that that sin know this. That's why they made a petition that God would would have would not carry out that judgment because. They love their offspring so much. That's why we have these green initiatives. Save the planet. It's all about the enemy. If he can delay this, he knows he delays judgment. And therefore, it's not in the enemy's interest to see the earth get, get to the point where God judges it. Because there goes those Nephilims. There goes all those evil spirits. But God has said what he said. He, he said, finally, we, we know how the final outcome is going to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We know that. We, 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 we see in 2 um, in, in, uh, Peter Chapter three, verse ten. The word of God says, it, it, "God says He's going to draw. He's going to destroy the earth, mm -hmm. it's, and, and and the heavens too." He says, "Let, let me read this to you." Second Peter, chapter three, verse ten. So we know how it's going to end. Mm -hmm. But the days of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. You see why we need a new earth? Yeah. Yeah. And you see why we're going to need a new heavens? I'm talking about the second heavens? Yeah. Yes. Verse 12 says in the same chapter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, looking for the hasting unto the coming of the days of God, wherein the heavens being on fire, they're going to be burnt up yeah. and dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Do you see that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, and if you go back to a chapter, chapter, chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, we, we see here where God says in his word, he says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, these are the same angels that were back in chapter 6 of the book of Genesis. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But cast them down to hell. Mm -hmm. And I was sharing with you yesterday, one of the first things Jesus, what did he do when he left the cross when he died? He went, he descended down, and I'm sure he went straight down to the, not the part where the humans are. I mean, he went there too, but to the part where the angels are locked up and says, Hey, I'm here to tell you, you were lied to. You thought you were getting out. You're not getting out. Mm -hmm. I've got the keys of death and hell now. Glory I am in charge now. Amen. Glory to God. And took Satan by the scruff of the neck and put him, or put him to open shame before all his demons, before all his angels. Every one of them, and every, that's why when you and I use the name of Jesus, devils tremble. Amen. They have no choice but to obey. Amen. Because they know what Jesus did to them 2,000 years ago when he, when he descended down into hell. Praise God. And when he rose again from the grave with the victory. Hallelujah. 
when he was down there, he got the victory. He got the victory before he raised, before he rose up. He didn't rise up and then go back down. Do you see? Amen. So the word of God says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 again, For if he spared not the angels that sinned, he cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 says, And he spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, being, bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly. Verse 6 says, and turning, and, and, and using the example, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Now, if we go back to chapter 6 of the book of Genesis for a moment, you'll see that the main reason why God brought judgment, the flood, is because the human race was contaminated. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was polluted. Mm -hmm. There were no, the majority of human beings were no longer 100% humans. True, sir. True. We have to understand this. True. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I know it's been preached that Noah preached for so many years and nobody got saved and the only people that got saved were, was his wife and his two, his three sons and his three and their three wives, eight people in total, mm -hmm. and that is true. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand why God says, "My spirit is not going to strive with these people anymore." And the Word of God says their imaginations are just continually evil because of the evil seed. Yes. Satan's goal was to pollute the human race so that the Messiah could not come forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why when you read. In, in uh, verse uh, 9, the Word of God says here, sorry, I've got the wrong passage. Uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse, uh, well, I'm going to read verse 8 too. Verse 8 and 9, the Word of God says, and, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. There was something different about Noah compared to the rest of the humanity. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So he, he found grace. He found favor. Mm -hmm. He was in a right relationship with God. Yeah. Now, now and, and the word of God says, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. He was just mm -hmm. and perfect mm -hmm. in his generations. Mm -hmm. And Noah walked with God. Now, when I look at this word perfect, it means his genes were not polluted. Yeah. 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 You got to catch right. this. We're yeah. talking about a seed war. Come on now. His genes were not polluted. Amen. Okay? Yeah. So, so when I looked up the Hebrew on this, the Hebrew word is tamin, mm -hmm. and it means without blemish, mm -hmm. it means perfect, it means upright, it means without, it means spot, upright, whole, sincerely, complete. I like this one, complete. Great. It also means full. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's 100% human. And not only is he 100% human, he's in a right relationship with God. Yeah. And his genes are not contaminated. Glory. He doesn't have any Nephilim genes, DNA running through his veins. Mm -hmm. Can you all see this? Yes. Praise That's why the, it says, Noah was a just man and perfect. The key word here in this verse is the word perfect. In other words, he was, a, he was not a hybrid. He was a 100% human being. He was not a Nephilim. He didn't have any of those DNA going through him like some of the other folks did. Or many of the other folks did. You, you see, the enemy's goal is to change the human being's um, uh, genome. Right? Yeah. And the, the, let me just give you a definition for a genome. A genome is an organism, is an organism's complete set of genetic instructions. Okay? Each genome contains all the information you need to build a, that organism and allow it to grow and develop. In other words, our bodies are made up of millions of cells, is it not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And each one of these cells have instructions mm -hmm. for us telling us how we're going to grow, how we're going to develop. Yeah. It, it's like a recipe. Yeah. They, they all have instructions of what to do. Yes. 
when a certain time comes. Uh, so, it's, it's, so it's a set of instructions is known as the genome and is made up, that's what makes up our DNA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Each of our cell body types have this, our skin, our liver, our organs, all of this. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So within the DNA is a unique chem chemical code that guides our growth and development and health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What the Word of God is telling us here that Noah's DNA had not been tampered with or had not been compromised. Okay, let's fast track it to the New Testament. When the time came for God to bring the Messiah into the world, he could not use a human being, mainly a man, and get the sperm from the man to bring forth to the Messiah because Every human being that was born on planet Earth had been born in sin, shaping iniquity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, had to br he had to do it in such a way that the Messiah would not have blood of any of us flowing through his veins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore we read in the Gospels that God found a woman called Mary, a young woman, she was a teenager, and uh, he sent an angel, Gabriel, to speak to her and told her that she'd been chosen to bring forth the Messiah. She asked the question, how is this going to happen? I don't know a man, I have not been intimate with any man. And the Word of God goes on to say, angels, uh, Gabriel told her, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and overshadow you, and I put it in my own words, cause you to become pregnant. Because the seed that you're going to have, he's going to be called the Savior. He's going to become, he's going to be Jesus, his Greek name, Hebrew, Yeshua. In other words, he'll save men from their sins. He's a Savior. Yes. And in order for him to be the Savior, he cannot have his blood contaminated. Mm -hmm. It has to be clean, mm -hmm. no sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us, for the, three and a, for the 33 and a half years that Jesus lived, the Bible says he knew no sin, but he became sin on the cross. Okay? Up until that point, he knew no sin. He had never sinned, and he kept his life spotless, clean, to be the perfect sacrifice for your sins, my sins, all of our sins, for the sins of the world. The enemy thought he had God, but God was way ahead of him. The enemy use all kinds of devices, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, we'll look at some scriptures in a moment, to just to try to prevent the Messiah from coming into the earth. First he killed Abel, the firstborn son, between Adam and Eve, thinking it's going to be him. But it wasn't him. That God, it wasn't him. And that didn't limit God. Did it? No. No. And, and uh, he went forward. Polluted the, by the time we get to chapter 6, the majority of the human race is polluted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 And it looks like his plan is going to work, but God was way ahead of him because he had a Noah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. He had a Noah. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. And when God brought judgment on, that, on, on earth, we, we call it Noah's flood, everybody that was outside of the ark perished. And the only one, that's, only ones that survived was Noah, his wife, and his three sons and three wives. Their three wives. Mm -hmm. Eight people in total. Mm -hmm. And after the flood, they came out. And the Bible says the giants returned again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was showing you that the enemy didn't stop. He didn't give up. No. Yeah. And, and there, therefore... We have to realize that uh, that the enemy is not giving up, and even though Jesus has been to the cross and that the cross is behind us now, he's still the seed war is still on mm -hmm. yeah, sure. because he's doing the same thing today as what he was doing back in Genesis chapter six mm -hmm. by. His attempt is to pollute the human race mm -hmm. to the point where nobody can get saved. Mm -hmm. 
You have to realize another thing, two things. Some may wonder, but in during the tribulation days, the Bible says in the book of Revelations, when you start reading chapter 12, 13, 14, those chapters are there. The Bible says it's coming a time that those who are on planet Earth will not be able to buy or sell unless they have the name of the beast or the number of the beast or the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Is that what it says? Yes. yes. And the Word of God goes on to tell us that anyone that has the name of the beast, the number of the beast, or the, the mark of the beast can never ever get saved. Mm -hmm. So it would seem to me that during the tribulation days, that when individuals take that mark or their name or the number of the beast, they are now compromised and how, how whatever form it comes in, whether it's a, a chip or whatever, they've altered their DNA and they're no longer 100% human and can then no longer get saved. So the, the, this seed war has been going on from since Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 and it continues, it will continue after God has removed the church it will continue during the tribulation days. Remember, the Word of God tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Satan is the god of this world, small g. He is in, he is in charge of all these world systems. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And the word of God tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, We rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness in, in, of this world, in spiritual, and spiritual wickedness in high places. We see him carry out his warfare when the time came, the, Satan knew that a time had come when God was going to bring a deliverer into the world. He knew, when most, he, he, knew, he, he knew the time had come for a deliverer to come. So when you see Exodus chapter 1, the word of God says in verse 8, he says, Now there rose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mighty than we. Pharaoh knew. How did he know? Well, it's a known fact that the Egyptians were deep into a cult, deep into uh, some dark things. Hallelujah. And therefore, because he was deep into some dark things, no doubt the enemy spoke to him and, and communicated with him. And things like that. An enemy knew a deliverer was going to show up on the scene. And they were very skilled in their occult practices. So what do we see in verse 10 of chapter 1 of the book of Exodus? It says, come let us deal wisely with them. These they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falls out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get up out of the land. In other words, they'll leave. We don't want them to leave. And therefore, what did they do? He, they made taskmasters over them and they afflicted them. And the more they afflicted them, the more they grew, the more they multiplied. You see, he didn't like the idea that they were multiplying. They were a threat. And uh, the Bible says in verse 13, the Egyptians made the Israelites to serve with rigor, harshly, with severity. They were cruel. They mistreated them. Yes. And they, they made their lives bitter, with hard bondage. And uh, you'll see in verse 16 and 17 that the Pharaoh talk, spoke to the midwives and he told them that when, when the women are on the stool and they're about to give birth that if it's a son, kill it. You'll see that in verse 16. If it be a son, I'm jumping in the middle of the verse, then ye shall kill him. But if he be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God. It's what the Bible says and not the king. And they didn't go along with the king's commandment. Mm -hmm. And they saved the men's children. In, as a result of that, Moses was born in that and his life was spared. Amen. And Moses rose up to became, and he became a deliverer. Mm -hmm. But he's not the Messiah. No. He brought them up out of Egypt. 
into the promised land. Yeah. Did he not? Yes, he did. And uh, 40 years later, when they're getting ready to go into the promised land, Moses didn't make it. He, he only got to sit. He almost made it. He came so close that uh, in the preparation of that, God started speaking to Moses to speak to the others. He says, this is what you're going to do when you go into the land, mm -hmm. the promised land. Yeah. And we know the, the promised land um, where all the Canaanites will live in. Well, we have to understand this because if you don't understand this, you're going to you're going to accuse God wrongfully and says, "God, you're into, you're, you're 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 genocidal. Mm -hmm. You you kill off nations, you kill off people, you ki kill off uh, ethnic groups and things like that. What kind of God are you?" And this is this is, the, this is the problem that many people have when they read the Bible and they don't understand it, yeah. and they start accusing God and says, "I don't want nothing to do with the God of this Bible." Come on, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand why God gave these instructions to the Israelites because it's a seed war. What are we seeing in Deuteronomy chapter 7? You want to go there with me for a moment? In Deuteronomy chapter 7, I'm reading from the uh, New Living Translation. We can follow with me. I'm going to read the first seven verses. Listen to what God has to say. Because there's a reason why God is telling the Israelites when you go into the promised land, kill the men. Kill the women, yes. kill the children, yes. kill everybody. Okay. Don't allow anyone to live mm -hmm. because many of them had that Nephilim seed goat in their, in their DNA. Richard. Not all of them were giants, mm -hmm. but many of them were. Yeah. And therefore God wanted all of them removed. Remember, war was declared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what is interesting is, you know, the Canaanites are descendants of who? Ham. Who's Ham? Ham is Noah's, one of Ham's, Noah's. Noah's sons. The giants came back, saints. Let me put it another way. The Nephilims came back. And they haven't left. They're still with us today. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 to 6. This is, this is the New Living Translation I'm reading from. Listen. When the Lord... Your God brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Havites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You see, if you don't know it's a seed war, you won't understand this. That's right. Paul. It's important you understand the sense. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why we're taking time for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Mm -hmm. Nor shall you make marriages with them. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, don't marry them. Mm -hmm. we, we, you see, sense, we, we, we can glean some instructions from here, too. Yeah. You've you got to be careful who you marry, because we just read in Daniel chapter 2, did we not? Where the Nephilims are amongst us. Yeah. We are warned in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Be not unequally yoked with who? Unbelievers. Yeah. Yeah. Now you decide to go fall in love with somebody who does not know Christ. You don't know if that person is a Nephilim. Mm -hmm. Or they've got Nephilim's DNA flowing through their veins. You, you could be marrying the devil himself. Yes. 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 No, 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 saints. It's time for us to... And because of the time that we're in, because you see, Jesus said, you know what the Word of God said in Matthew, right? Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm -hmm. He clearly said, as it was in the days of Noah, it's going to be similar mm -hmm. as he coming up to the time when he comes back. Mm -hmm. We know from scriptures and outside scriptures that the population back in those days was polluted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Guess what? It's polluted today. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's why you just don't go marry anybody you, you just fall in love with and things like that. Mm -hmm. You better double check and make sure that this person is really sincere and genuine. Mm -hmm. You better hear from God. Mm -hmm. And you better make sure you have your witnesses. Yeah. You see? Nor shall you make marriages with them. Verse 3. You shall not give your daughters or your son, nor take their daughter to your son, for they will turn your sons away from following me. Mm -hmm. 
and serve other gods. Saints, Nephilims don't serve God. They hate God. They hate those who have been created in the image of God. You see, saints, you and I created the image of God, and Satan's agenda is to remove that. And that's why you have the blurring of the sexes today. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you have all these gender types. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why you have a lot of people today who don't know what their gender is. Whatever they were born with, they now say, oh, I'm not too sure if I'm this or I'm that. Mm -hmm. Because it's part of the agenda, it's part of the seed war agenda. Mm -hmm. Get people mixed up, get them doubting what they are, get them thinking they're something else and they're really not. It opens up the door for demonic spirits to come in and demonic spirits come in and convince them, well, you know, you were born a female, you're really not a female. You were born a male, but you're not really a male. Oh, you're not even a male or a female, you're something else. It's confusion, saints. And the Bible clearly says in the book of Genesis, God created them male and female. They were distinct. You see, saints, again, what else were they doing back in those days? They were mixing animals with different animals, ending up with hybrids. Are they not doing it today? They're doing it today. They're doing animals with animals, different animals. They're doing humans with animals. That's what's going on. Okay? We're living in a wicked time. But we have to understand this. Because, we want, because if you don't understand Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, you won't understand why God takes the position that he did and why he still takes the position today. You're not, as a believer, you're not free to go marry just anybody. Why? Because here's one of the characteristics of these people. They'll turn your heart away from God. Guaranteed. Not maybe, not, not so, so. Because you know, a lot of Christians think, well, I fall in love with an unbeliever, but I'm going to get him saved. I'm going to get her saved. I'm going to convince them that they need to give their life to Jesus. You're, you're deceiving yourself. Here's the thing. You should not fall in love with somebody who, who does not know the Lord. And, and you're much safer to know that they, they got to know the Lord before they met you or you met them. Then you know that there's, there's some sincerity, genuineness there. Because some people just go along. I've seen people in the office come into our office and just pray the sinner's prayer just to get what they want. <laughs> are, 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 you, are you hearing me? And some people would. Well, I want to marry you, so I'll, I'll go along with you, but I really don't really believe this stuff. Do you see? They'll turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So the end of the world will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. But thus you shall deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images and burn their, craved, their carved images with fire. Why? For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people to, for himself, a special treasure above all peoples on the face of the earth. Again, saints, we see another scripture here in Exodus, chapter 23, verse 31 to 33. He, he's telling them that, For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee, and thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me, or if thou serve their gods, for if thou serve their gods, it shall surely be a snare unto thee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God says, get rid of them. Because they're going to be a problem spiritually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see? Had the Israelites gotten rid of those who they should have gotten rid of, there'd be, there would have been no need for David to fight Goliath. And you know, Goliath had several brothers. Yeah. I think he had five of them. Yes, yeah. And if you read, you read the, the, life of, the life of David, throughout the life of David, his men took care of the other giants. Mm -hmm. See, they were still there, even in his time. Yeah. You see? And, 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 and one of the things about the giant, for 40 days he was defying the armies of Israel, 
He was blaspheming the name of, he was blaspheming the God of Israel. See, they're anti-God. They don't love God. Neither do they love human beings. Okay, they have no problem shedding blood. The giant for 40 days says, give Israel, give me a man that I can fight with him. And this is what I'll do to him. David comes on the scene and he says, you know, I come against you in the name of the Lord. And this is what I'm going to do to you. This day, you're, I'm going to give your body to, and all the other armies, or your, the Philistine armies, to the, to, to the, to the, your carcasses, to the fowls of the heaven, to the animals, to the wild beasts. Mm -hmm. Exactly what David said. That's exactly what happened. Do you see those things? Mm -hmm. You come down again through the Old Testament, and you see, you know the story of Esther. A wicked man raised up in power. Mm -hmm. His name was Haman. Mm -hmm. He's no different from Hitler. Mm -hmm. Hitler is just a recent one. And, and, and um, when he found out Mordecai was a Jew and Mordecai wouldn't bow, at, bow to him, um, he, 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 he put together some plans to get rid of Mordecai and to get rid, not only of Mordecai, but all the Jewish people. Esther chapter 3 verse 6 says, And he thought it scorned to lay hands on Mordecai alone. He said, No, no, I'm not going to just take care of Mordecai. Everybody associated with Mordecai I want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai, Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Asahazarus, even the people of Mordecai, all the Jews. And if you go to verse 7, he says, And in the first month, that is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Hazareth, they cast Pur, that is Lot, before Haman from day to day, and from month to month, and the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar. Well, this month of Adar is coming up very soon, next month. It's not, not, it's not far from now. Purim is coming up. But uh, you all know the story. The plan was, let's wipe out the Jewish people. Why? So that the Messiah cannot come. Do you see this? Come down, fast track down to the New Testament. What do we see going on there? The wise men show up. Where is the king of the Jews? They came to Jerusalem. They put the whole Jerusalem in a stir. Mm -hmm. What do you mean the king of the Jews? Well, we've come with travel from afar. Where is the king of the Jews? We've seen his star. See, this, the stars, they tell the story. The constellation, the gospel message is in the constellations. Did you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have seen his star is what they said. Mm -hmm. And finally, they got to see Herod. And Herod pretended that he was really interested in going and worshiping the king too. But Herod had, a, had an evil plot. He wanted to find out where this so-called king of the Jew is so that he can go kill him. Because he considered himself the king of the Jews. So he, so he, he spoke to the, to the, to the uh, wise men and told them, when you find him, come and let me know. So I can go worship him too. Well, they found him all right. And uh, I know Sunday school will say they found him in Bethlehem. No. You remember when they asked the wise men, how long have you seen the star? It was two years. Yeah. Jesus was at least two years old. Yeah. He's no longer in the manger, so to speak. He was a, he was a little boy, two, at least two years old. Mm -hmm. That's why you read in Matthew chapter 20, sorry, Matthew chapter 2, verse 16, when Herod saw that the wise men would not return to tell him where he where where uh, where where the, where the king of the Jews was, he went out and massacred all of them That's in in the area of Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. this, this is what it says in Matthew chapter two verse sixteen. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. And in all the coasts thereof, the surrounding areas, from two years old and younger, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. But you know, God had forewarned Joseph before that, and Joseph left in the middle of the night. You see, I, I believe I, I believe Joseph was up in Nazareth when the wise men found him, because you see, they continue, after they left Herod, they continued to follow the star. Mm -hmm. And the star led them to where Joseph and Mary was, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the young lad. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And they bow down and worship him and give him gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Mm -hmm. And it was received. But no sooner they left and they went to sleep, that is the parents of Jesus, God spoke, says, Joseph, get out of here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he got up immediately and left in the middle of the night. God. Satan could not carry out his wicked plan. Amen. His goal was to kill the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And you know the story, they went down to Egypt and stayed several years down there until Herod was dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you see this now, sense? Mm -hmm. Is this helping us to get a better understanding? Yes. Yes. Because as we, as we take time to fill in the gaps, it helps us to be able to go forward and understand the times that we're in. It's going to help us to understand UFOs. And we'll talk about that so that it as the Lord leads. It helps us to understand what's going on in the heavens. It'll help us to understand uh, transhumanism. It'll help us to understand uh, um, uh, uh, there's a, all these modern terms that are coming up. Panspermia. You heard that word before? Well, let me just leave this with you. Panspermia is the idea that life can be distributed through the universe from planet to planet. In other words, when we get more into UFOs and stuff like this and we start talking about them, the idea is that we are here because, because they are there. Right? In other words, they brought seed to the earth. And when they brought seed to the earth, it gave birth to mankind. That's a life, I was going to say life from the pit of hell. No, it's a life from the second heavens. It's a demonic life. Yes. But that's what they want us to believe. Mm -hmm. That's what, with that, that is the narrative today. Yeah. The World Forum, the World Economic Forum, that's what they're promoting. The globalists, that's what they're, pro that's what they're promoting. Mm -hmm. okay? yep. They're promoting transhumanism, they're promoting panspermia, and all that. They get the world ready because they know what is coming. Yeah. And it's, so they get the world ready with the disguise, using the UFOs as a disguise, but really we know it's, it's beyond that, it's bigger than that. But God doesn't want you and I fall into those traps or being deceived. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe God is calling some of this stuff out for us now, and he's opening up to us, we can recognize it ahead of time, and not wait until when the narratives are very mature, and everybody's saying the same thing, and we realize, no, these are a pack of lies. We're not buying into that. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna accept it, it's not of God, it's demonic. It's a deception, it's a delusion. Let's embrace the truth, thanks. Amen. Let us hear what God is saying. Amen. Hallelujah. And if anybody has any difficulty with what I shared with you just t today, I'm wrapping up now. I would suggest listen to the video from yesterday. The foundation was laid there. All right? Let us stand. And again, if you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Ask me, okay? Because we are, we are talking about new things. We're talking about things the church hasn't talked about on the whole. That's one, and some of it is new. The church couldn't talk about some things because some of these things are just coming to light now. Yeah. During the pandemic, see, we've seen a lot of things come into light. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for your word. I pray, Lord, that you'll seal the truth of your words to every one of our hearts, what we've heard today. I pray, Father, that you continue to give us all deeper spiritual understanding. I pray that you continue to let revelation knowledge flow into all of us individually and collectively. I pray, Lord, you cause us to continue to keep us in, the, in your truth. Help us not to fall into lies or into deception. Help us to equip ourselves well and to understand what your word says and what it does not say. Guide us, direct us, lead us in the way that we should go, every one of us, so that it may be well with us. And Lord, I pray you give everyone a fresh appetite to get into the Word, to feed on your Word, and also to pray, to have a good, strong relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.